In the annals of history, few events match the sheer brutality and horror of the Bataan Death March. This merciless ordeal unfolded amidst the chaos of World War II after the fall of Bataan in the Philippines to the Japanese forces. The march was a ruthless journey of about 65 miles, forced upon approximately 75,000 American and Filipino soldiers. They were prisoners of war, their only crime being their undying allegiance to their nations. The Japanese forces, victorious and unyielding, showed little mercy as they demanded this gruelling trek. The soldiers, already weakened by the battle, were subjected to extreme conditions. The tropical heat was relentless, the terrain unforgiving, and the path seemed to stretch on endlessly into the horizon. But the physical strain of the march was just part of the torment. The real horror lay in the appalling lack of basic necessities. Food and water were scarce, and rest was a luxury they could ill afford. The Japanese guards were not just indifferent to the plight of these prisoners, they were cruel. The march became a sickening display of inhuman treatment. A man too weak to continue was not helped, he was killed. A soldier who dared to ask for water was not quenched, he was punished. The captors reveled in their authority, their power to inflict pain and suffering, to decide who lived and who died. Among the many tortures employed, the sun torture stands out for its sheer barbarity. Prisoners were left in the blazing sun without any shade or water. The tropical heat turned into a deadly weapon, the sun a relentless enemy. The Bataan Death March was not just a march, it was a brutal, inhuman testament to the savage nature of war. It was a journey through hell, a vivid depiction of man's inhumanity to man. It was the unforgiving march that forever etched a dark chapter in the annals of World War II. As the prisoners trudged on, the true horrors of the march began to reveal themselves. In the scorching tropical heat, the captives were subjected to unimaginable forms of torture. One of the most brutal was the infamous sun torture. Prisoners were forced to stand in the blazing sun without any shade or water until they dropped from exhaustion or dehydration. It was a cruel test of endurance, a testament to the profound depths of human cruelty. The march was not merely a physical ordeal but a psychological one as well. Prisoners were stripped of their dignity and humanity, reduced to mere numbers in a grim parade of suffering. They were denied the basic necessities of life, food, water, rest. Their captors showed no mercy, pushing them beyond the limits of human endurance. The reasons for the deaths along the way were as varied as they were tragic. Disease was rampant, with malaria and dysentery claiming countless lives. Exhaustion took its toll as well, with many simply unable to continue under the relentless strain. Executions were not uncommon, a grim testament to the ruthlessness of their captors. The unlucky ones were bayoneted, beheaded, or shot on the spot. In total, it is estimated that around 20,000 prisoners perished during the march. Each death was a testament to the brutality of the ordeal, a stark reminder of the inhumanity of war. Yet, amidst the horror and suffering, there were stories of resilience and hope. Stories of prisoners helping each other, sharing their meager rations, supporting those who could no longer walk. These acts of kindness and solidarity, however small, offered glimmers of humanity in the face of overwhelming cruelty. A gruelling march, where every step was a fight for survival, and death lurked at every corner. The Bataan Death March was a horrific chapter in the annals of World War II, a stark reminder of the depths to which humanity can descend in times of war. Yet it also stands as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, the capacity for hope and kindness in the face of unimaginable adversity. The march ended, but its aftermath echoed through the corridors of history. The end of the Bataan Death March was far from a relief. Survivors were left to grapple with the scars of their ordeal, both physical and psychological, while the world was left to reckon with the shocking brutality of the war. In the aftermath of the march, the Allied forces were determined to bring the perpetrators to justice, and so, the wheels of justice began to turn, slowly but surely. The Tokyo War Crimes Trials, much like the Nuremberg Trials in Europe, sought to hold those responsible for these heinous acts accountable. Among those indicted was Japanese General Masaharu Homa, the man who had overseen the Bataan Death March. Homa, known as the Poet General for his love of literature, 
was a paradox of a man, a military leader responsible for one of the most horrific war crimes, yet a man who appreciated the beauty of words. But beneath the veneer of a poet was a man who had allowed and possibly ordered the brutal treatment of tens of thousands of prisoners. The trials were extensive, the evidence damning, eyewitness accounts, survivor testimonies, all painted a grim picture of the atrocities committed under Homer's watch. Despite his claims of ignorance and his pleas for mercy, the tribunal was unmoved. Homer was found guilty of war crimes and sentenced to death. On April 3, 1946, Homer met his end by a firing squad, a stark contrast to the slow, torturous deaths of those who perished in the Bataan Death March. It was a grim reminder of the cost of war, of the price paid by those who wield power recklessly and with disregard for human life. In the aftermath of the Bataan Death March, justice came in the form of a bullet, a swift and final end for a man whose actions had caused untold suffering. In the face of such inhumanity the world sought justice, a justice served cold and hard. The Bataan Death March remains etched in our collective memory, a stark reminder of the inhumanity of war. This harrowing event left an indelible impact, not just on the survivors but also on their families and the world at large. Those who survived carried with them physical and emotional scars, their lives forever marked by the horrific experiences they endured. Their stories, passed down through generations, serve as powerful narratives of human resilience and courage in the face of unimaginable cruelty. The march's brutality has reverberated throughout history, shaping our understanding of war crimes and the necessity of holding perpetrators accountable. It remains one of the most harrowing events of the Pacific theater, a chilling chapter that has forever shaped our perception of World War II. The Bataan Death March, a testament to human endurance in the face of unimaginable cruelty, a chilling chapter in our history that we must never forget.